My first camping memory began with a lost sleeping bag and nearly ended in a hospital trip. If that wasn't enough to put me off the activity, the next attempt brought a flooded tent after a surprise overnight rain shower. This despite the near daily guarantee of summer storms in Georgia. My dad would wake up with an inch of water at his back and me at his front, trying to use him as a makeshift life raft. As if learning our lesson, we later tried a safer autumn camp instead, only to be met with an early cold front that sent us home at two in the morning. <clears throat> Broken tent poles, a forgotten tarp, wet firewood, I'm struggling to think of a time where something didn't go wrong. Though given how many other family stories include these, let's say twists, it's fair to wonder how much of this came with camping versus camping with my dad. Yet, these are the moments that stick out in my head. Memories I cherish, not in spite of the mishaps, but because of them. All that said, you might think a camping anime would be a triggering experience for me more than a therapeutic one. Yet, in its calming portrayal of the highs and lows behind every venture, Yurdu Camp fills me with a swell of nostalgia for those times gone by, pushing me to get out and create all new ones. As its lead girls discover this new hobby together, their trips are filled with the same missteps, from not having the proper gear, to dead cell phones, and finding out a campsite is closed for the season only upon arrival. Hell, they even go through the same winter disaster I did. Yes, preparedness is a skill I'm still trying to get used to myself. But whether it's the hilarious situations they find themselves in, or indulging in simple joys like sitting by a warm fire on a cool night, Yurdu Camp captures the feelings of a trip start to finish. Saving money with friends, coming up with a plan of the things you want to do and see, the anxious excitement the night before, waking up before dawn to head out as the whole trip stretches before you, followed by the growing melancholy as you cross the halfway point of the time, and finally, that lonely feeling once it's over and you're back to yourself. There's the random interactions with the kind stranger, or the experience of local cuisine. The series may as well be a tourism advert for each of its areas, not only thanks to its landscapes, but how it captures the charm of these communities. Whether it's the traditions of a small shrine, or a tucked away restaurant serving the best okonomiyaki in town, each of the girl stops gives you a flavor for its culture and people. Yurdu Camp's lasting visuals may be the stunning vistas and sunrises, but these are only the reward for the journey to them. However, as much as it is a warm reminder of those memories I hold closely, it's also dispiriting to sit here in a pandemic world, unable to forge new ones. On the one hand, escaping my head for 24 minutes every week and living vicariously through these dorks has been its own reward. But when I see Mount Fuji in the show, and think of the trip to Japan I had to cancel last year, or how I've not been able to see so many of my close friends and family. I miss it. More than I can even say. That's where season two really shines. At a time when we can't safely get together, Yurdu Camp celebrates our time alone. For all its group outings, it spends as much of its run with Rin enjoying a quiet ride through lush scenery, and the self-reflective, healing effects of this almost meditative connection to nature she gets from it. This really comes through in Rin and Nadeshko's character arcs across both seasons. The first season focuses more on Nadeshko and her friends becoming a part of Rin's world. As they discover camping for themselves, Rin is brought into their group dynamic. Where before camping was largely a solitary hobby for her, through Nadeshko, she finds the joy of these shared experiences. Season 2 then offers more of the reverse, with Nadeshko seeing the value of Rin's independence, eventually taking on a solo venture herself. Season 1 presents a common arc. The introverted loner character meeting a bubbly extrovert and gradually coming out of their shell, finding a group of people they can be a part of. In lesser hands than Yuru Camp, this initial state can be portrayed as a failing. The independent character is often isolated and unhappy with their situation. Certainly there's value in showcasing the importance of forming genuine relationships, as Yuru Camp does throughout, but rarely does a show illustrate the value in the opposite side. As someone who really connects to the peace and comfort Rin finds in this time to herself, it's refreshing to see an anime portray an introverted character like this without making them an outcast, creep, or seem fundamentally broken. Nadeshko and her friends also respect Green's feelings, giving her the space she wants, even when they are in a group camp together, and she wants to head out early to catch a different spot, or simply ride along the journey behind them. When Nadeshko asks her why she enjoys doing things alone, Rin explicitly calls this out. <laughs> Here, Yurdu Camp doesn't just get introvertedness as well as anything I've seen, but specifically in relation to nature. 
Nothing is more therapeutic to me than simply spending time alone outdoors. It's the rare opportunity to let go of everything weighing you down. Responsibilities, stress, and doubts. To not even have to think about time. Dean's solo adventures elicit that same feeling in me, while pushing me to get out the door and find it for myself. Integral to this healing power is how it establishes atmosphere. Yurdu Camp is a classic Iyashike series, a style of slice of life formulated around this restorative mood. To put it another way, pure, unfiltered vibes. Your mileage may vary depending on what you're able to get out of this focus on nature, camping, and cooking, but the gentle, low-stakes pace of a Yurdu Camp episode is part of the form. It's not just pretty backdrops, it's the obvious care the staff has put into bringing its locations to life. Director Yoshiaki Kyogoku, art director Yoshimi Umino, and the teams at Sea Station and Production I clearly did their research across the series' many locales. Whether the beautiful shot of a Tori gate at sunset, or simply a winding road through the countryside, the detail in recreating these real-world settings puts you in the show's space, where everything from its lighting to the gentle acoustics in its soundtrack then capture that soothing atmosphere. It's easy to look at Yurdu Camp and see little more than cozy fluff, but actually, yeah, it is that. And never have I needed it more. Would this season of Yurdu Camp carry the same weight for me had I watched it, say, 12 months ago instead? Does that matter? Experiences with media are inherently driven by the time, place, and state of mind we view them in. That's a feature, not a bug. Nor is it something you should feel you need to qualify your take with. Rather, embrace it, because that's what makes your experience with it special to you. Yurdu Camp didn't just help me unwind for the brief half hour I turned it on each week. Rin's contemplative experiences alone, coupled with Nadeshko's optimistic spirit, reminded me there's no reason I can't look for the same, despite everything going on. When you're at your lowest, it's so easy to convince yourself not to. Living in a place where winter means feet of snow and minus wind chills doesn't inspire any motivation in me to get out to a state park every weekend, but I did. And while it doesn't make any of the things weighing on me suddenly go away, it helps. Even if only for an afternoon, it helps. At a time when so many of us needed it most, Yurdu Camp Season 2 was a reminder of the possibilities you have, even alone, if you just smile and seize the day. Oh, oh,